never be then with you. Yeah. Then listen to this. On May 14th and 15th, the Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky African American Chamber of Commerce presents the Millennium Emerging Business Conference, Creating Wealth in Our Community. There will be workshops on technology, empowerment projects such as the stadium, Lincoln Court renovation, and Finley Market. Other workshops are health and human services, microbusiness, business capital, and political empowerment. Tony Brown, TV commentator and author, will be the keynote speaker Friday evening. George Fraser, noted author, will be at the luncheon on Saturday. Julia Hare, national director of the Black Think Tank, will speak on Saturday afternoon. For more information on the Millennium Emerging Business Conference, call 569-8287. That's 569-8287. All right, let's get together. I'm going to try this thing again. You can tell I'm not a radio person. I'm cutting people off and everything. But what I'm going to do is talk to Ken Bridges and Al, Re and Al Wellington. We're not going to take any calls because if I hit a button, it's going to cut somebody off. Uh, let's see. Ken? Ken? Hey. How you doing, bro? Hey, Jim. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing sorry, great. No disrespect intended. I'm not a radio person. I'm oh, pushing my. every button in the house and messing up. Hey, my brother. There's <laughs> no problem. It's great to be on your show. Hold on. I'm going I'm to take Al. I'm going to conference him in. Okay. Al. Al? Yes, sir. All right. I got Ken on. Can you hear each other? I can, I, I can hear Al. Okay. All right, my brother. How you think, Oh, uh, pretty good, man. I got it together now. Okay. What we're going to do, I want, I want you two brothers to explain what Matai is and, and just give your own pitch on it. But uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to take any calls. I want you to give the whole, the whole spiel. Because if anybody wants to talk uh, to Ken, uh, he'll be here in Cincinnati tomorrow at the meeting, which I've already given information on. So you guys got it. My question is to our listeners, are you Mata? Okay. No, well, Ken. Okay. I, I think the, the very best way to do this is um, for me to uh, kind of uh, have Al talk about okay. how Mata started by way of uh, the fact that there was some tremendous research that was done at the Million Man March. And right. Without that, there would be no Mata. Yeah. All right. Let's do it, Al. Well, well picking up on that, uh, I come from a research background, talking about marketing research. Right. Those are the kind of companies that do surveys, and questionnaires, kind of people that you get tired of talking to when they call you on the phone. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, uh, my wife and I have owned and run a marketing research company for about 20 years. Uh, 1995, when the Million Man March was, was uh, in sight. Speak up a little bit, Al. That in 1995, when the Million Man March was in sight, uh, I'm talking about June or so of that year, we decided uh, that we were going to go down to Washington and conduct a survey. Uh huh. And the reason was because when we think about the Martin Luther King wa uh, March that they commonly refer to as his wa march, we always wondered how nice it would have been had someone been there conducting a survey to capture the mindset of the people. And, uh, so we said we wouldn't let a march of that magnitude escape again without yeah. a survey being conducted. So we made our plans beginning in July. We were all organized for that day, 16th of October. We had about 70 people employed to administer this questionnaire and literally hand tabulate the results that same very day uh -huh. and have the results ready by 5 p.m. to be broadcast on various news uh, programs that had uh, subscribed to the data. And uh, without any more on background there, uh, we studied about 1,070 men, and each questionnaire took about 15 minutes long for the men to answer the question. Mm -hmm. These were personally conducted interviews as opposed to a self-administered kind of thing that you fill out on your own. And, uh, and we asked some questions that were really designed at understanding uh, who were these men, that would come, that came, and where they came from, and why they came, and we really didn't go into the thing trying to understand how many of them came, but it turned out that we really had the best data yeah. on, on determining that as well. And when you look at the results from this research, it was very clear that the men who showed up, we interviewed men who were 18 years of age and older, 
the ones who showed up there saw a sample of the population there on the mall that day. They were very uh, upscale, we call them, in the research market, meaning they had high uh, household income, over $40,000. 38% of them were college graduates. You know what I'm saying? College graduates. Mm -hmm. Another 38% had some college education, although they hadn't graduated, got a degree. So here you had, a, a, from a so-called educational standpoint, they had a high mark, they had high income as a group of men. 36% uh, was military veterans, which really surprised me. Yeah. We had a very high home ownership uh, group, uh -huh. and so on. When you look at where they came from, they came from all over the country. Out, right. of, out of the 50 states, 39 states uh, had, had someone uh, representing them. Uh, even Alaska had, had someone there from Alaska. Yeah, they were from all over. All over. The District of Columbia and Maryland and Virginia and in that area grew the heaviest uh, you know, population in right. those territories, as you would expect. Uh, the East Coast is very strong. When you started looking at why they came, it was very interesting. Uh, the men in general said that they came to really support very high principles, the principles of, of uh, unity, uh, principles of self-help, uh, self-determination, things of that nature. They weren't mm -hmm. driven there just by personality. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, for example, there were 32% of the men said they came because uh, they were, that the march was initiated by Minister Louis Farrakhan. And that compares to the top, top uh, reason, which was they came because uh, the march called for improving and affirming moral values in the black uh -huh. community. 88% of the men came for that reason. And encouraging broad-based unity, 85% of the men came for that reason. Uh, you can answer the reason that these numbers add up to way more than 100 is because you can give more than one answer. Right. Okay? Uh -huh. But so it was those principal reasons why they came uh, to the march. And, and we were impressed when we saw it, especially when I saw the theme of unity, self-determination, and atonement, you know, uh, and, and affirming moral values. When I saw all those things coming together. And said, wow, this is an unusual group of, of people. So that was uh, why. And then I'll hit one more thing, and then I'll, I'll let Kim do some talking about this. We wanted to understand uh, if they had to empower our community, what would be, be the empowerment strategy or strategies that they would be most interested in putting their time and money behind? And we gave them a list of potential strategies and asked them to tell us which of these they'd be willing to spend their time and money. And it turned out that the number one strategy was to develop more black-owned business. Uh -huh. That was number one. Now, that was real surprise because we had political strategies that talked about uh, politics, right? you know, and strategies that talked about education. Let's get more education for the community and so on. But it turned out that it was, let's develop some black, more black-owned businesses. And number two was let's go support black, more black businesses by buying goods and services from them, okay? And number three was let's put pressure on the banks to provide money for black business. Uh -huh. So the top three answers were all in the right direction. And when I, Kenny and I saw that, we knew it was time. Because, see, 15 years earlier, or even 10 years earlier, maybe even five years earlier, we believed that right at the top of the list would have been things like, you know, uh, let's boycott to get right. affirmative action right. put back in place. Uh, let's boycott for reparations. Or, or, or let's, uh, you know, uh, appeal to this congressman for this yeah. or that. Let's right. go elect more black politicians. Mm -hmm. But no, those weren't the number one, two, and three answers that the people gave us. So we were quite encouraged. We said it's now time. I was just saying that earlier before you came on that I think each of us knows deep down in our hearts and our souls what the top priority is or should be. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, picking up from that, um, as Al said, when we saw that, Jim, we were so impressed because when you when you really more or less summarize the research, it basically said that the men uh, that were there, what they really wanted to do was to practice the principles of Kwanzaa 24-7. Yeah. But they had no vehicle. And right. uh, when Al and I saw that, we said, let's go to work to put a vehicle together. Because as you well know, and as we've seen in your book, 
I mean, we, we know that this economic asset that we have, which the University of Georgia says this year will be about $532 billion yeah. that we as a people spend in this economy, we knew that when we saw those kinds of responses of, of unity and self-determination and cooperative economics coming through loud and clear, that these will be simply pipe dreams if we don't come and create a concrete, viable vehicle that everyone who chooses to can simply plug in in their own way and have a very easy way to participate in some kind of a mechanism whereby we can literally come together to practice cooperative economics and unity and self-determination, etc. So we began putting together uh, this vehicle that we now call MATA. But what was so important is that we recognized from research that about 10 to 20 percent of our people when we looked at that march and also looked at the Million Woman March some two years later, it became very clear to us that, quite frankly, about 10 to 20 percent of our people were ready to en en embrace a strategy, a clear-cut strategy of us coming together for the upliftment of ourselves as a people. So that said to us that if 10 to 20 percent are ready, that means 80 to 90 percent are a very good chance that they're not ready. Yeah. So from a marketing standpoint, we really realized that we had a, a segmented market. We had a sliver of our people who are ready to come together and do something, and that caused us to say, let's focus in on those people who are ready. Yeah. Let's not be angry with our brothers and sisters who are not ready. Let's not get all confused and off track, but let's focus on those people who are ready to come together. And that caused us to create that word, MATA, M-A-T-A-H. And the word Mata, we put a definition on it, which simply says those people of African descent who know that practicing a race-first philosophy is the key to obtaining true freedom for people of African descent and who refuse to have that spirit within them crushed. So we said all of our efforts would be aimed at that group that can hear that definition, see that definition, and proclaim, well, shoot, I'm Mata. Yeah. We recognize that so many of our people have been Mata all their lives, and his we look back in history, we have seen people who have been what we now call Mata, the Marcus Garveys, the Harriet Tubbs, right. the Booker T. Washingtons, the, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and uh, on and on and on, great people throughout our history have been Mata. So that was our inspiration, that great research that Al's company uh, did at the march, and it really showed us there's a segment of our people that are ready, and we said, let's put together this vehicle. Now, in putting it together, we started in November of 1997, and we started this vehicle with a thought in mind that we would bring the people together. We would literally organize the people who call themselves Mata to do two things. One, raise our consciousness, and two, redirect our consumption spending. Uh -huh. Now, we recognize that the simple act of spending toward ourselves, taking more of that $532 billion and spending it toward ourselves, while that seems like a very simplistic and easy thing to do, if there is a vehicle that allows that to take place, we recognize that right now only about 5% of those dollars go toward people of African descent. That's right. So we said, well, if we're going to be able to do that, there has to be a prerequisite before we will be able to effectively do that. And by that, I'm... Uh, I want you to come right back after this break and tell us that, Ken. Okay. Hold on. Be, be right back. you by your Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky African American Chamber of Commerce. You heard the commercial. We hope to see you this weekend at the Sharonville Convention Center, the uh, Millennium Emerging Business Conference. But right now we're talking MATA. Let me push this whole button and get Al Bridges and Ken, I'm sorry, Al Wellington and Ken Bridges back on the line. You back, brothers? You back, brothers? Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. I did it right. Okay. I'm afraid to let go of the buttons, but go on, Ken. Okay, so what I was saying just before we went into the break, Jim, is that 
and, and recognizing that we've got this tremendous, tremendous economic asset, we also recognize that there's something that has prevented us and is preventing us from coming together as a people. And, and we have really realized that what it is is that we must raise our consciousness. And, and what we're simply saying there is that we know our history, and we know that if we look back in terms of this, what we call the Willie Lynch syndrome, we've been really programmed psychologically to not work together as a people, to yeah. have a certain amount of disdain for everything African about ourselves. And to and we understand the, the psychological programming that was involved by way of the what we call the Willie Lynch syndrome to enslave us psychologically as a people while we were also enslaved physically. Well, when the physical enslavement ended, our psychological enslavement did not end. Yeah. And we call that Willie Lynch syndrome, we say it operates very much like a computer chip, and so we call it a Willie chip. And we say <laughs> we've got to get that Willie chip out of us. We've got to deprogram it. We've got to de pull it out of us and get that chip away from us. And the only thing that we know that effectively blocks that Willie chip and removes it from us is the effort of raising our consciousness, that is learning more about our true history, who we are as a people, appreciating what our ancestors have done over the hundreds and thousands of years prior to now and leading up to our coming to this country. Right. And so as we raise our consciousness, we find that that Willie chip gets pushed out of us and we end up at that point in time uh, recognizing that we get psychological freedom and that psychological freedom leads to economic freedom. That's so right. the effort of Mata is fully involved in doing those two things, raising the consciousness and redirecting the spending. As you know, Jim, we've got now uh, over 90 products and services that are offered in this channel of distribution called Mata. Right. That's where we're able to redirect our spending. But the most important product in that channel is what we call Standing Order, and it features one book and two audio tapes that come out every single month that people who are in Mata sign up for. And that's the area in which we actually go about the business of re-educating ourselves and raising our consciousness. Yeah, I got a call today from Rialto, California. Mm -hmm. about the uh, standing order, the one that's uh, out this month. Of course, my book is involved in that. Oh, they and make... my brother called me from California raving about that, and we had a long conversation <laughs> about it. i got to tell you, Jim, that, that, that makes Al and I really, really get excited because, you know, there are literally hundreds of brothers and sisters across the country that are involved in standing order. And, and as you said, you know, we've, uh, we've been doing this now. This is our fifth month of standing order, and this month we're so excited that your book, uh, economic empowerment or economic enslavement, we have a choice, uh, is our book, and there are two audio tapes that go with that. But that is the work that we have to do. The most important thing that we're doing is addressing this issue of psychological enslavement. And we've got, as I said before, several different categories of products, from computers to nutritional products, to products of, for the mind, to children's products. We even have a long-distance service called Mata Direct, where we're able to not only save dollars, but you know, importantly, bring some of the dollars that we spend in long distance back to people of African yeah. descent. Let me say something about that. I, and before you guys came on the show, I was giving my little dialogue, dialogue monologue tonight. And uh, I was saying that, you know, I have had literally, well, I don't know how many people have come to me with different ideas and, and, and marketing schemes and everything. And I say, you know, that's fine if that's what you want to do, but that's not where my head is. That's not where my focus is. I said, when you can find something that's black-owned, black-controlled, then come and talk to me. I am just not going to spend my time uh, uh, continuing the cycle of creating wealth for someone other than black people. I just, I just don't want to do that I, because I know I can't spend 100% of my money with black businesses anyway. But as much as I can, I want to do that, and I try to do that. So this Mata Network has really impressed me in that regard because I really feel like I'm doing something, doing something to create wealth for someone else black. Uh, uh, the products are great. I have used them. My wife loves them. And, and you know what I say? These are the same things that we go and buy from other folks. Why not buy them from black folks? We need them. We use them every day. So why not spend our money with black folks? So that's what has impressed me about Mata. I'm really not the kind of person to get involved with, you know, day-to-day -day selling and that kind of thing. That's just not my thing. But I support this, I promote it, I talk to people about it, and I'm trying to get more people involved in it because it's the right thing to do. 
Well, you know, Jim, uh, Al and I, when we both read your book, uh, and we were talking about this earlier today, um, you know, we're, we're, there are some like-minded people around the country um, who know that it's time for us to cut the foolishness That's out right. and drop all the craziness and nonsensical things that have divided us because there's just too much at stake. That's right. Um, you know, time is running out. Uh, you talk about Claude Anderson in your book, uh, the author of Black Labor, White Wealth, and, and Claude is, uh, is part of Mata as well. And, and George Frazier. And George Frazier is part of Mata as well. And these brothers have, uh, you know, stepped forward to say that time is running out. We do not have a lot of time. I heard one of the brothers... Uh, talking on your show early tonight about the growth of the Hispanic Latino market. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is is that we as a people will no longer be the number two um, uh, you got that right. group, if yeah. you will. Uh, I hate to even use the word minority group. But, right. you know, that, that is, it has put us in a position where time is running out. And we, what we're simply saying, we, meaning myself, Al, yourself, and literally thousands of other brothers and sisters who are involved in Mata throughout the country, from the East Coast to the middle of the country to the South to the West Coast, we're simply saying that we're not leaving this on our children to do. We're yeah. saying that we must step up because, you know, we've been given the talent, we've been That's given right. the ability, we've been given, and our ancestors have opened the door for us, and the question is that's on the table and you address it so eloquently in the, in the closing paragraph and epilogue of your book when you say that, you know, if we can't step forward now, our ancestors have to look at us and just shake their heads. I mean, all that they have gone through for us to get what we have right now, the knowledge, the wisdom, the ability, we must come together as a people. So that's why we're saying we're only focusing on those people who can hear that definition and say, Amata, yeah. I know that we've got to step forward. Yeah. Got about three more minutes. Al, you want, you want to add anything to this? I'll tell you, it's just so great even, even sitting and listening. Um, this conversation. I tell you, with Mata, uh, Jim, in the, in the two and a half years now that you've been running uh, so strong, uh, Ken and I have met so many people across this country who have just been looking for so long for a vehicle, yeah. a vehicle that uh, they could get behind and, and support. you got to keep in mind, Mata is literally in business for profit-making business. Sure. That's in business to organize people who say they are Mata. Right. And the only way the business succeeds is that we succeed in organizing the people. Mm -hmm. And if you ask any of the scholars that are out there or any of the people out there who have just a, a, any type of a thought on what we have to do as a people to solve the basic problems that we have, and to the person, they'll all tell you in one way or another, we got to get organized. That's right. <laughs> that would be the first thing I would say. That's right. I hear it all the time. <laughs> hear it all the time. But yet, there hasn't been until now a vehicle in place, literally, to organize the folks. Yeah. So that's what I'm so excited about, mm -hmm. and seeing them come together in the thousands that we've seen in this very short period that we've been out there. Well, I really appreciate it. Like I said, uh, you know, this is something that I know that uh, I will support, I should support. And I would do everything I can to uh, to uh, spread the word about it and to do my part. And I hope everyone else out there who's listening will show up at 7 o'clock tomorrow night at the Career Resource Center at 1811 Lasanaville on the third floor. Come on out and you can meet Mr. Ken Bridges. He's coming to Cincinnati. And we're going to talk about this and see what we can do here in Cincinnati with Mata. Of course, Bomani Tahimba uh, is a participant already in the network. Uh, Brother George Parrish, who's probably listening tonight as well, they'll be there. So uh, I look for all of you listeners to come out, and let's see uh, if we can put ourselves together and our heads together and do what we're supposed to do in terms of economic empowerment in the city of Cincinnati. Ken, you can wrap it up for us. We're going to go to a break in about a minute. Well, all I have to say is that, uh, Jim, we're, we're really blessed to have um, people such as yourself involved with us. Uh, as you said, uh, you're supporting this thought. We're supporting... Uh, you and, and, and your endeavors. Uh, we, we're just so thankful that we're able to link up. Uh, as Al said, there's so many brothers and sisters who know it's time. They've been looking for a vehicle. Well, we have one now. Uh, we have to overcome our fear, our inertia, yeah. our inability to step forward when we know we must step forward. So I would just urge your listeners who are Mata, and that means those people of African descent who know that we've got to practice a race-first philosophy to obtain our true freedom, mm -hmm. 
in, in terms of the people of African descent and those people who refuse to have that spirit crushed, I encourage them to come out. If they can't come out, I encourage them to get in touch with you so that they can get some information about Mata. It's what we call, it's Mata time. It's time. All Thank right, you brother. so much for having us on. I appreciate it. To Al, you take care. And Ken, I'll see you tomorrow. All Look right. forward to it. All right. Take Thank it you. in. All right. We'll be right back after this break. 749-1480. All right, we're getting right back to the phones. We're going to take this last call. Brother Kirkland, how you doing, bro? Hey, Jim, um, all praises to the Father, and good evening. Uh, I wanted to ask, well, first I want to say I appreciate uh, what the caller